Today on Survival Preparedness for Beginners, we're going to be talking about the top 10 prepper mistakes that you all out there have to avoid to try to keep yourself out of some bad situations. These are really in no particular order. These are just some things that you really want to try to avoid in the situations that we are in. Number one, not knowing how to adapt to a lot of the changing conditions that are going to be happening during a natural disaster or a SHTF situation or any of these things. Could be even a major weather event. You know, all these different things are very critical in your survival and your family's survival. So knowing how to adapt is a very important key to your survival. It can be the biggest thing to get you in a lot of trouble really quick if you're not up to speed on how to adapt to changing conditions that are going to probably be happening very rapidly. Number two, not knowing how to use your tools. Your toolkits, your power tools, you know, I mean, people can go out, you can buy saws, you can buy um, hammers and nails, and you can buy staple guns, and you can have all the fancy equipment and everything else. But if you don't know how to use that kind of stuff, it's useless. You know, I mean, you can have a huge stockpile of all different types of those items. And if you don't know what you're doing, they are really just useless pieces of tools that you have in your toolbox. And that is not something you want in an emergency type situation. As I have done in, say, my hurricane video series, I talked about having a bucket with tools and stuff in it and making sure that you know what you need to do and how to use those tools to get you through the storm. It's no different than being prepared for an emergency situation, whatever it may be. Number three, probably more than likely prepping for unlikely disasters. Now, we've all seen all the TV shows and all this kind of stuff, you know, doomsday preppers and all this kind of thing. Basically, if you prep for things that are in your area to get you going, to get you on the road to being prepped, as in like hurricanes, bad storms, tornadoes, whatever it may be, if you prep for the things that you know are going to happen, and likely they will happen, folks, floods and everything else, if you are prepped and ready for all those type of things, more than likely you're going to be able to survive just about anything else that's going to come down the road and get us because Mother Nature is always going to be coming around and throwing us something, a blizzard, an ice storm, a hurricane, tornado, floods, drought, the whole nine yards, fires. You have to have a plan and prepping for more than likely the unlikely disasters. Like if you think you're going to prep for something like a zombie apocalypse or a you know doomsday prepper and all this kind of stuff. You're setting yourself up to fail. So if you start off with prepping for what you know is going to be a lot better for you and your family. Number four, more than likely there's probably a lot of people out there that are not storing your water properly. You have to make sure that you can store your water properly. If you don't know how to do that, then you want to make sure that you're doing your homework and figuring out how to store your water properly because you don't want to store the water and then come to find out when you need it, it's no good. That doesn't help you out in your situation and it doesn't help your family out either because you failed to follow the rules of storing water properly. You got to make sure that, you know, you don't make that mistake, people. You know, I mean, you don't want to have to learn the hard way when it comes to water on how to store and everything else. And you also want to make sure that you have some way to filter that water also and clean it. And this way here, maybe you can survive. Number five, improperly storing your food. Food storage is a huge thing. 
A lot of people out there ask a lot of questions on how to store different products and everything else. And I've done several videos, especially on rice, on how to do that and how to do it correctly, folks. So you really have to pay attention to when you're storing your food, how you store your food, where you store your food, and everything else. You need to have the proper information so that you will have food. It won't be bad. Nobody's going to get sick or die because they're eating bad contaminated food. This way here, it ensures that you and your family will survive any type of situation. Number six. Now this one here is... You know, having a preparedness plan, okay? You got to have a preparedness plan and be able to put it in place. I've talked about that several times on this channel about having a plan written into a notebook, into a journal, into something and have a plan written out with where you may have to go if you can't stay in your home. Um, you know, where is the safe point? Who do you notify that you're going to the safe point? All these different types of things, okay? You want to make sure that, you know, it is, you know, you got to list basically each possible scenario that you could run across in a preparedness plan. So this way here, hopefully, you're covering all the different basics so that you and your family can either stay in your home and be safe or if you have to leave your home so that you know where you're going so that you and your family will be safe at that point also and then number seven is not practicing your preparedness plan so if let's just say you have to leave your home are you prepared and do you know how to if you have to rough it out in the woods until it maybe is safe to go home or until you can get to your safe point you know i mean do you understand i mean basic camping skills will help you out a lot in that type of scenario so you want to make sure that you're practicing these things and if you're an avid camper hiker or any of these type of things you will probably be just fine because you have adapted to the outdoors and you know how to set up a tent how to set up a tarp to keep people dry and things dry um, things to do how to chop wood you know basically you have to have fire so that you can cook and you can also sanitize your water with the fire because you can bring it to a boil these type of things so you have a shelter and the whole nine yards but these are things that you have to make sure that you are doing and if you're not an avid camper or hiker i would highly suggest that you get out at least once or twice a year and practice some of these things to, so that you know if you have to set it up in your backyard so you know how to use a lot of your different things because not knowing how to use these things you can buy all the gear in the world you can buy the top gear there is out there but if you don't know how to utilize it in a survival scenario it's not going to do you any good number eight which is a big one don't store all your supplies in one location if all your supplies is in one location and you have to leave all right, you're only going to be able to take so much supplies unless you've got a huge trailer or whatever else that you can pull behind your vehicle or whatever. But let's say you don't have that much time. So if you have supplies stored in a different location, either at a friend's house, a family member's house, maybe you have land, maybe you have a cabin, maybe you have a vacation home, whatever the case may be, if you can store some of your products there, split it half and half so you have some in your home and some in your safe area, well, that's a lot better than having everything in one place. You know, you don't want to keep all the bread in one basket if that makes sense to you all because it's not a very good scenario and what can happen is if something does majorly happen, you're screwed because if you can't take a lot of those products, now you have to pick and choose what you want to take with you with the availability of the size of your vehicle. Something to think about, folks. All right. Number nine, don't go showing off all your supplies. All right. <clears throat> now, yes, I do videos. I'm a content creator. 
and I show you some of my stuff, you guys haven't seen all of my stuff. All right. But there's a difference. I'm trying to teach you on how to be prepared, what you need to do, how to do it, what's a store, how, you know, the whole nine yards. But you don't need to be bragging to anybody. That's why you want to try to use like a spare room in your house where if you're going to have friends and family or somebody come over for dinner or whatever else, close the door. They don't need to know what's in there. You know, this way here, what you have is what you have and nobody else needs to know about it because the less people know, the better off you are in a survival SHTF type situation. So remember that, all right? Because you don't want all the information out there because then all these people are going to be coming to you when everything goes south. If you get what I'm saying, folks, it's not a safe way to practice being a prepper. The last one on this list is believing you can survive on your own. Now, we all have this belief that, you know, if something happened, you know, we can all survive on our own. We'll just go live in the woods and I'll be set and I ain't got to worry about anything. More than likely for most people, that is not a justifiable scenario you want to put yourself into. Having a community or having a group is going to be so much better for you and your family in a SHTF type situation, emergency, natural disaster, or anything else. The more people you can pull together, the more things can get done, people can survive, and there is fear in numbers. If you get what I'm saying. So a couple of thugs coming down the road. If they see 25 of you standing out by your garage. And you guys are all just hanging out there. More than likely those two thugs are just going to keep on going. If you are standing out by your garage. And say your barbecuing is just you. Nobody else. And these two thugs come by. More than likely. If it is a SHTF type situation. And they're hungry. They're probably going to try to attack you and take whatever you have. You get my point? So believing that you can survive on your own is not really a good scenario you want to put yourself into. So you want to make sure that you have other people, whether it be where you live now or where your safe haven is that you're going to go to so that you have other people around you to help protect the whole group and protect you, your family, their families, their kids, and everything else. Just remember this, folks, all right? You might be the crazy one with the tinfoil hat on right now, all right? But one day, mark my words, one day your friends and family members will be knocking on your door when a disaster happens, and they don't know what to do, and they know more than likely, because you'll probably tell your very close friends and your family probably knows what's going on, that you have been prepping and you've been putting stuff up and, and you will be thankful that you were the one who dared to have a disaster preparedness plan in place and that you were prepared and ready. And on that, you can rest easy knowing prepping isn't pointless unless you're doing it wrong. So this is why it's so important for everybody out there to try to do your best, to be prepared, to thrive, to survive, just like I have said in so many videos. Because we all know the government isn't going to be there to help us. History has proven that. You are on your own. I'm survival preparedness for beginners and i thank you for joining me on this video today i hope everybody stays safe you keep prepping and until next time folks i will catch you all on the flip side